I understand these people that are looking to the skies and straining their ears for that trumpet. I get it. Because when it hits the fan, we all want Jesus to come to us and comfort us, to take us away from our struggles and our temptations and the problems. What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where when I make an episode, at least I'm consistent in one thing, and that is that I am always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. And today, well, piss. Jesus hit the snooze button again. Stick around. So in case you missed it, here's what happened in heaven today. The Father went to the Son and said, now is the time. Because this bearded Santa Claus looking dude on YouTube with a, with a really lame Facebook following has said that you're coming back at a specific day and a specific time. It is that day, it's approaching that time, and Jesus, like any child, looked at his father and said, five more minutes. That's right, today was rapture day. Pastor Prophet Jerry Tony had predicted not only the day, but also the hour today, September 28th, 2022. And, and leading up to this hour, of course he called people like you and I scoffers. Ah, oh, the scoffers and mockers. <laughs> well, no shit, Sherlock, because we're called to do this. You are a wolf in sheep's clothing. You are a false prophet. You wouldn't know the word right ways from up if it punched you in the face. You're a liar. And you are harming the body of Christ. And you do deserve to be the object of ridicule and scorn. I mean, if we were to go Old Testament, what you did today would earn you the death penalty. If a prophet says, thus saith the Lord, and the thing that the Lord has said doesn't happen, then he is a false prophet. This pastor prophet said Jesus would come back today, and he didn't. And what does he do? He goes on to YouTube. Well, first of all, let's give credit where credit's due. He went on to YouTube to address his 40,000.6 followers. With a video five minutes long said he delay he has delayed his coming. Yep. Jesus hit the snooze button. Look, I, all of us from Orthodox denominations that are older than your evangelical charismaticism, all of us have quoted unanimously one scripture passage. Nobody knows the hour or the day. Nobody knows. So if some Santa Claus looking jackass like this guy tells you Jesus is coming back at this time on this day, mark your calendar as a day that Jesus is not coming back. Just, but let's get away from the mocking and the scorning because it's fun. It, it, it does actually need to be done. But let's get to the why. Why does this actually matter? These false predictions, why do they matter? Well, truth be told, I have been going through a lot. Remember I said I was going to come back to YouTube and then I haven't? I have been going through a lot lately. And I haven't quite figured out what's happening. Somewhere between my side of the story and everybody else's side of the story, somewhere in the middle is the truth. I need to, to figure out what's my fault, where are my sins, and what, what are the sins of other people. But in this hardship, which I haven't even decided whether or not it'll disqualify me from a platform like YouTube, in this hardship, the only thing that I have had is Jesus. The only lasting thing, I have had plenty of friends and even family that has gotten closer to me to help me through this, whichever side I land on. But the best thing that I've had is Jesus. And I understand these people that are looking to the skies and straining their ears for that trumpet. I get it. 
Because when it hits the fan, we all want Jesus to come to us and comfort us, to take us away from our struggles and our temptations and the problems. And he does. Not mystically, not magically, not fall, coming down in the cl- No, 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 stop. Simple, boring Christianity is how he comes to us in word and in sacrament. So have some of my sins been laid bare? Yes, they have. And in response, what do I do? I go to confess my sins. I can deny them. I can lie about them. What the hell point is that? Or I can go to the one whom God has called, my under shepherd, and speak these horrible, rotten, sinful things to him. And he can speak to me Jesus' words of forgiveness. He can speak to me the words, I do not condemn you. Go and leave your life of sin. The audible peace and comfort words from Christ himself that come to me, these matter. When I still doubt, I can go and confess with my brothers and sisters in the faith that I am a poor, miserable sinner, and we all collectively hear the same words, your sins are forgiven you. And if we still doubt, I don't know why we would, but if we did, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Take this and drink it. This is my blood of the new covenant, which this blood is shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. God, Like a hot coal on the tongue, you have been made clean. Your sins are separated from you as far as the east is from the west. Be at peace. Your sins are forgiven you. This whole eschatology rapture thing matters because there are Christians who are looking for Jesus in all of the wrong places. All the while, he is coming to us in simple means, humble means, to work greater miracles than his second coming. That's why this matters. That's why we do take the time to mock and to scoff. That's why we do quote Deuteronomy 18.22 to these people. That's why we do quote Matthew to these people. No one knows the hour or the day. That's why we take the time to point out that any biblical New Testament reference you have to a secret rapture is actually the public event of the resurrection of the dead. That's why we do these. I mean, God, let's be honest. We're human and it's fun to mock the hell out of these false prophets. And we should literally mock the hell out of these false prophets. So long as we're hoping that they repent, that's what we should want for them. And for their followers, we should want for them to come to us, to the Orthodox faith, to the older denominations, the one more grounded in church history, in church doctrine, in church practice, the ones who have a better understanding of the scriptures that has been unchanged for 2,000 years. We want them to come to us. We don't want them to be so disenfranchised with false prophets that they forget that Jesus actually has very real, very good, very faithful promises for us. But they're boring to our inner charismatic. Our inner charismatic wants the goose pimples during the music. Our inner charismatic wants the majestic, magical things to happen. But Jesus is way more boring than that, and thank God for that. This matters. So that's all I really wanted to say on it. Whether or not this is my last video, I don't know. I have to do a lot of soul searching. I need to decide whether or not I qualify to have, biblically, whether or not I qualify to have a platform like this. One more video, minimum, is coming. And it's deeply personal to me. This is the most personal I have ever gotten on YouTube. So watch for that one. And maybe if you as the viewer understand, then you are free to leave a comment in that video when it comes, whether or not you think I should step back and be quiet or whether or not I can keep doing things like this, like making theology videos. I'll leave that to you. 
So until next time, may God richly bless you and the grace and the mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.